Here by looking at the shoulder, this illustration, I'll kind of over voice through it and we can find out what are the rotator cuff muscles. So here what we're looking at is uh, the rotator cuff and we're going to see that this area is actually, um, it's, the thing I want you to understand about it, it's not a very um, stable structure. It actually is mostly um, a floating joint. It's called a ball and, ball and socket joint, and the reason is because it has so much range of motion. It is a ball sitting upon a, um, a, uh, a concave area, which is on the scapula. So first you're going to see that the, uh, this is the front side of the shoulder on the top left. Uh, you're going to see that this is the muscle called the subscapularis. It comes over to the, um, to the shoulder over, over on this left side, and it actually uh, creates anterior stability for the shoulder as well as it an, is it an, it's an internal rotator. So it's very important within swimming. On the bottom right, you're going to see uh, the muscle above on the very top. Um, that's the supraspinatus, and right below is the infraspinatus, and this is going to be the teres minor on the bottom uh, right, right area, the, th the third muscle down. Um, all I want you to realize about this shoulder uh, view is that it's mostly muscles coming across to stabilize the joint. So the muscles are very important when it comes to shoulder stability, and it's going to be very important when it comes to treatment of swimmer shoulder. So just take that into account. We're going to talk about everything else. And personally, I think swimmer shoulder, it's very, um, it's kind of like runner's knee. It's a very bucket diagnosis for if you're a swimmer, you have shoulder pain, obviously you have swimmer shoulder. Um, and I think it's thrown around, thrown around very loosely. To me, it really doesn't matter um, what the diagnosis is. If I see that there's a problem, we kind of take into account the, uh, the mechanism of injury, how it, how it happened, uh, and kind of figure out what the spe specific problem is for that specific person. Because obviously, everybody can have different problems. Um, the thing to realize about the shoulder is because it has such extreme range of motion, like I said before, the muscles are very important in, in regards to stabilizing the shoulder. Now, I don't know who, if you guys have ever tried a bicep curl at the gym. Um, obviously, you see that in this phase here, when you're coming up this high, it's very easy. If you had that same amount of weight and it was all the way at the bottom, it'd be much harder. So, all I want you to realize is that when muscles are elongated, they're actually much weaker and much more prone to injury. Swimming is one of the... Uh, or the, the important thing about swimming, or the, the unique thing about swimming rather, is going to be that you have, you re, the athlete is required extreme ranges of motion to be able to get the arm up, down, around to accomplish some of the stroke patterns, but also they have to have strength within those ranges, which is the very unique aspect of swimming, because that's not required in every single sport. Now, as it is stated, when muscles are elongated, they're much weaker, much more prone to injury. So you can imagine if your athlete is repetitively weak and damaged in a certain in a certain range of motion and they keep doing it over and over and over and over again especially if they're young they might not notice right away but eventually when it comes on later they can say well I have shoulder pain now you know and I think the real fix is going to be the small turn that occurs within these within these extreme regions so a lot of times there's tears within the muscles these tears heal up with scar tissue and the scar tissue really has to be removed before the athlete can improve now I'm going to I'm going to show you a model here, and this is um, something that I've shown uh, frequently in the past. Most new patients kind of see it. And this is a demonstration of really what an overuse injury is, and this is kind of what shoulder uh, a swimmer shoulder would would be considered. And basically, all I want you to understand is an overuse injury is basically a buildup of scar tissue. So it's scar tissue. It's much more hardened tissues, and this is the mop that I use for a demo, and I just put paint on it really. So all I want you to see here, this is going to be normal tissue. It's free flowing. Um, especially when other muscles come on top of it, everything kind of smooths or uh, slides real nicely. When something comes on top of this, this is really rough, um, and this area really has to be broken up before any improvement can can occur. Um, so all these fibers need to be separated, and the way you can do this um, is basically soft tissue work. Um, you need someone that's really educated about what they're doing to be able to find out what are the specific areas or muscles that your athlete has a problem with and be, to be able to break them up effectively. So the question I get a lot um, with this uh, injury is going to be, it's, it's mostly can, what kind of stretches and what kind of exercises can I do to make this problem go away? And I think those aren't bad things, but I think taking into account a more systematic approach is a much better way to go. And what I like to do with my athletes is, first off, we need to locate the problem. What, what kind of muscle or ligament or tendon or is having the problem on this athlete? Second is you need to address it properly. I like to use deep tissue work called active release techniques. Some people prefer grass and some people prefer to use massage therapist. Whatever you'd like to do. Personally, I think active release is very good. With my athletes, usually I, I 
I see response time within three to four treatments where they're um, at least over 50% better and they're very happy that, especially if they haven't found success elsewhere. So either way, active release is something I use, I really like it a lot. Third is, once you can actually get that athlete through motion without pain, you need to re-strengthen that pattern and that's where the exercises are going to come into play. Fourth is you need to make sure to talk to the coach. Is there certain things we're doing on the stroke pattern that's actually not ideal? And these can be the things that caused the problem in the first place. I think it's, it's very important to talk to the coach to make sure that they're uh, on the same page as you because a lot of times they can throw the athlete back into the water um, or have them do uh, very hard workouts without even knowing what's going on. Don't forget to check out our ebook at the website below.